My intention is just to create a more safer environment. And I just want to like salute you because like that cannot be easy. You know what I mean? Like oh. you could have like <laughs> broke down and like, I mean, you had your moments, but I feel like they've been healthy. Oh my God. I had to watch that scene like 20 times. <laughs> Because I couldn't believe Eric said so many nice things about Jasmine. I was very emotional like Jasmine uh, because I, I wouldn't have expected that coming from him. I wouldn't have expected Eris to appreciate his wife the way he did. But anyway, that's cute to see. Um, hey there, thanks for stopping by. It's Valerie. Welcome to my channel. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Married at First Sight, season 16, episode 16. Um, if you're new to my channel, please leave a like. Um, and a comment and also don't forget to subscribe oh my god the, the episode starts with all four couples getting ready to go to couples retreat and couples retreat from married at first sight history have not been amazing <laughs> but anyway we'll see what happens and it seems aries and jasmine are the ones that are going to be planning the activities so they're responsible for the events um and apparently they've organized a guy's sort of pageant so there's going to be a competition um aries was refusing to show his wife what he was going to wear and she was saying you know you have to win it for us so that was interesting and then shaq and kirsten's rap i think shaq and kirsten they would do amazing if they just stopped making silly remarks that triggered the other one i think they really need a good sit down and a proper conversation and then hopefully they'll get on the right track um in the car they really didn't do much eris and jasmine were busy going you know jasmine bought some cards so that they could start a conversation and they were sort of asking each other and then so you were saying you know you've taught me grace and she's like what do you mean i've taught you grace and she went oh well you've taught me not to be guilty because things are not moving at the pace they should be and it's like you should i don't get what he doesn't find attractive about this girl i i really don't the fact that he said he likes people with big butts people that are outspoken i i don't get it i don't really see why he doesn't like her i have to give him grace that he's not as bad as chris who dragged Paige through the mud but the fact that his cousin did whatever she did at their wedding and he has failed to progress in his relationship with jasmine is a big concern to me clint and gina are just two friends going on holiday what more can we say? And then Chris and Nicole. Chris and Nicole for me. The, the real Nicole is showing now. She's coming out. Because they were packing and Chris was saying, oh, if you can't fit your stuff in one bag, try and get a second bag. And she refused. She said she'll sit on her bag and her suitcase until everything fit. So she did that. And then in the car, they were talking about, you know, finding an apartment that will take three dogs. And I think what, what I got from it, I think... Nicole was expecting Chris to say, okay, during this time, you gave up your dog for us to live together. I will give up one of my dogs so you can bring one, you can bring your dog that way we'll only have two dogs. And hopefully that should make things easier for us to get a lease from someone. And Chris is not saying that. Chris is saying, oh, we'll wait until after we, you know, the weekend, we've enjoyed ourselves. We can't do anything because leasing agents are closed. And it's like, she just wants you to make a decision to give up one of your dogs so that she can keep her dog you have two dogs she has one dog she just wants you to give up your dogs and hopefully once you do that the two of you will be able to find a property that will take people with two dogs that's the impression that i'm getting and this business of dogs i remember started i think around season six when jeff got shanice a dog and now every season there has to be a couple with a dog and it's now getting out of hand they need to stop i think i'm a believer Nicole really loves Chris or Nicole really wants to be married because the way she was able to contain herself I thought she was going to explode in the car she didn't say anything she was upset obviously about the three dogs and how, what they're going to do when it's time for them to find a place but she kept it you know together she actually talked herself out of throwing a tantrum because she said I, I, I'm not going to throw a tantrum and it's like so all this while we've had to sit through your tantrums, but you're still able to control yourself. Why did we have to enjoy everything else that we did from the start of the season? Um, and so she was upset that they were going to be late and they were going to get the worst room. But what do you expect? They don't allocate the rooms before you get there. It's, it's a first come, first serve basis. And I think Jasmine and um, Aries did an amazing job having shots ready for everyone, sort of, you know, as a drink for them when they arrive. Maybe they should have drawn done a non-alcoholic but hey it is what it is and everybody seemed to be in great mood even even and nicole who was upset about the house 
issue seemed to you know be in a great mood and it was nice to see the husbands get dressed for the night and it's like i know gina well gina and clint are having to share a room this is the first time they've shared a room and it's like we're we're a couple of weeks two or three weeks away from decision day and you still haven't shared a bedroom we need a divorce what's the point anyway she decided to give him an uh, you know a, a, a little man bun and stuff and it's like if you you're saying you've given him swag you've been married to this man for how many weeks why in that time have you not given him a makeover if that's what you want maybe that could have helped why have you not talked to him into having a makeover to see maybe if he tried a, a you know a different style you might like him you might be attracted to him you're not really serious about being married to this man i don't think um aries thought he had it in the bag he was really you know he was being psyched up by jasmine jasmine is an amazing wife he's his legs were ashy and she actually crouched down and, and moisturized them for her, for him and it's like Eris is going to miss Jasmine. He's, I don't think he'll ever find a, a, a woman who will care for him as much as Jasmine would have, but he didn't pay attention to her. He decided to focus on, on shallow and superficial things, which I don't get why for a grown man who's almost 40. Um, Nicole said she didn't want to participate in the pageant thing, but obviously everybody else was excited. The guys were excited, so she was trying to sort of coach her husband and it was nice to see Kirsten also coaching Shaq and getting him to walk up and down and show her his strut and how he was going to model and she was sort of giving him tips of how to impress the judges oh my god it was amazing with the pageant everybody looked amazing I liked how they answered the questions but I don't think well Clint I get why they gave him last because obviously his wife was not going to fight for him to win and I think they Shaq should have got a higher number. I'm sorry, Shaq was not the Shaq gave better responses. Shaq looked more amazing than most of the husbands, so I don't get why he was number three. I think they gave Chris number three just because you know they knew if they put him last, he would be very upset. So that's why they gave him number three, uh, no, sorry number two. And I think Aries because he's the one who planned the event. This is why he got number one. That's just the impression that I got. But they all were very lighthearted about it, uh, I think. It was interesting, though, because Shaq, when they were asking, you know, there's a high divorce rate, what do you think the government should do? And Shaq spoke about giving couples free ma marriage counselling. And then I don't know what happened to Kirsten, because then Shaq, when they were in the bedroom and, um, you know, Kirsten was speaking to Shaq and she was saying, you know, when we were scoring the figures, I was a bit worried. But one of the guys gave a very good response. He said we should give free marriage counselling. And Shaq was like, that's me. And it's like, but Kirsten, you don't redeem yourself. Why? Now he's going to say you don't pay attention to him. He's already complained you're not supportive. And the least you could have done is sort of fight for your husband to get a higher number or, you know, compliment him on his response that he gave. That would have made more sense. Um, Aries was happy. He seemed to be in a great mood because he won. And so he even participated in a tradition when Jasmine said, you know, the tradition is for you to sleep in bed with your sash and your crown, and then you get your picture taken, which he was happy to do. Although he was saying, you know, any of the husbands want to pull up, he's ready because he wants a second crown. I will always say that Aries is a pity he came in with a lot of baggage in the sense that he came in listening to what his cousin was saying and he never gave his marriage an opportunity otherwise this would have been a great marriage for him Clint Clint and Gina I have a feeling that once production stopped recording Gina was sent to a different room I don't feel like they slept in the same bed I think we're just given the impression that they slept in the same bed but I don't think so they seemed very awkward the fact that you know they had to go and change in, a, in another room I have a feeling that production would have catered for the fact that she doesn't want to share a room with Clint. And we were just made to believe that they are going... Because they've been back from Jamaica almost six, seven weeks. And they're still not sharing a bed. Make it make sense? That doesn't make sense to me. Why then would they say they're married? What's the purpose of it? The fact that they go and they have a conversation in Clint's room every day. And then she goes to her room and Clint goes to his room. They're not an old married couple who say, my partner snores, you know and we don't do anything they're a young couple i didn't get that i i wish they would get a divorce and i'll continue to say i wish they would get a divorce oh it's nice to see the couples actually paying attention to their partners in the sense that in the morning aries got up to meditate forgot that jasmine wanted to wake up to meditate and then when she woke up she she sort of let him know that she was disappointed that 
you know, he didn't go and meditate with her. And he took the initiative and offered to go back and meditate with her, which was nice, which shows that he's actually do caring for her and her feelings and the fact that she's upset about it. He's decided to do something to sort of lift her mood. And she seemed way happier after they'd finished doing it, so which was amazing. And then she act oh my God, I thought he was going to get in trouble because he recorded Kirsten while she was sleeping and snoring, but she seemed to take it lightheartedly. She didn't seem really offended by it. And Chris, oh, it was very cutesy cutesy. He, you know, put up some posters for Nicole. I think he could tell she was still upset about the apartment they issue. So I think he decided to lift her mood or maybe one of the producers tried to get him to do something cutesy cutesy. I don't know. And then turns out there were bears, whether they left food outside or whatever they were doing there. Uh, <laughs> Clint is crazy. He went outside and just like, there are certain things that you don't do. Why would you go out and be with bears? Why? You don't even know what they're thinking. What if they attack you? And I'm surprised production let him go out there because that's a, you know, that's a safety risk. And will they be able to compensate him or did they get him to sign a disclaimer to go out? I didn't get that. Although they asked him, you know, would you attack a bear to save your wife? And he went, yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, that's sweet. I actually liked the little activities that they had the couples do because Kirsten and Shaq went to this thing where they said, on sort of like a tube and they're sort of sliding down a hill it was good for them because it allowed Kirsten to, to to not have control and initially she was very stressed about going up the ramp to go onto the slide and Shaq was saying this is the first time I've seen Kirsten be nervous and so that was good for him to see that she even though she's nervous she is trying they did have a conversation obviously their biggest issue Kirsten and Shaq is communication they're very bad communicators this is something that they needed to tell the experts. They are very bad communicators in the sense that they haven't told each other how they receive their information because they always seem to be on different pages. Shaq thinks they're progressing. She thinks they're not progressing. I, I don't know how they can overcome that because I wish Shaq and Kirsten, they are the couple that are going to break my heart this season, like Michael and Jasmina last time, in the sense that they had the, all the potential but didn't, do anything until last minute and by then they had already switched checked out and were ready to say no on decision day um and i think the producers were encouraging them to talk about decision day and i wish they decided to give each other grace i wish they'd allow allowed each other grace to sort of continue to grow i wish they'd asked the experts to help them communicate or they'd written down what they needed help with that way when the experts turned up they would be able to list out what they need help with and be given tools to sort of work on their marriage and they would have succeeded um and then clinton gina went on a roller coaster that was to be expected any activity that doesn't involve them interacting seems good for them from there they went to drink moonshine and they said that's what they have been doing and they enjoy drinking moonshine and i don't even know why they were talking about decision day we already know they have their answers they have friend zoned each other they should have asked for a divorce ages ago i think they've just been kept on the show otherwise it would have left the producers with just three couples and that would not be enough to make up the time that's the impression that i'm getting and then eris and jasmine eris is now trying to he's trying to to get his you know, he's butting here. And I, I, sadly, it seems too late. They went on this sort of um, uh, jumping arcade, I think. And they were sort of spinning and jumping. And he was actually fascinated after they climbed the wall and Jasmine beat him to it. And I think he realized that there's more to this lady. He didn't pay attention to her or he didn't try to get to know her. But there's more to her than just how she appears. And this is another couple whereby somebody was playing games too much and by the time they realized what they had it was too late um obviously they had the conversation about decision day and what they think they're going to do it's a pity eris didn't turn around by the one month anniversary it's a pity he brought the friend zone information in otherwise he would have had himself an amazing wife but hey it is what it is was I surprised that Clint was in charge of cooking? No, because he's been cooking for Gina all the time. But it was nice because it gave the guys a chance to sort of talk about their relationships away from the ladies. And sort of Shaq was venting about the fact that he still hasn't met Kirsten's family. Um, He hasn't met her dad. He has asked for it. But, you know, he's tired of asking. So he's just going to keep quiet. And it's like, I wish he would say this to her, to his wife. I wish he wouldn't just say it to the guys, but I wish he would say it to his wife. If he's afraid to say it to his wife, I wish he would bring Eris and Jasmine around and sort of 
have them sort of play mediators if he doesn't want to say it in front of the experts because this would help him in his marriage a lot. I think her dad decided to stay away because he refused to have a COVID test or something they said. And now it seems they've been married for eight weeks. He still hasn't spoken to Shaq. I wonder why they haven't just telephoned him. And at the dinner, it was cute to see people sort of talk about their partners and their relationships. Aries actually took me aback because of the way he praised Jasmine, uh, all the good qualities that she has. And it's like, oh my God, has somebody whispered this into your ear for you to recite or what? It really touched my heart. And I thought, oh my God, does, he, does this mean he really sees her for who she is? Does he really see that he's got gold in front of him? And if he's not careful, he might lose it. Um, but... I don't know. We'll see. I liked he had to leave, obviously, because he had to go to work. And I like the fact that uh, Jasmine actually walked him to his car and gave him a hug, which is something that Dr. Beth had encouraged them to do. So that was cute. Uh, Nicole and Chris obviously were telling everyone we've told each other we love each other. At times I get the feeling that they're sort of like bragging that we're doing way better than others. Well, they don't come out and say that, but I hate how sort of pompous they come across every time they talk about their relationship when everybody else is struggling i might be wrong this is me and then gina and and clint they were talking about everything they've been trying to implement to sort of get their relationship going and then she has to take a dig out of nowhere and it's just like why why are you still here you say you're still making an effort to see if things will work you've only got eight days till decision day why then do you continue to bring this man down if you're if you're if you're really that interested in making an effort and building on your marriage? I don't get that. I, I I'll continue to say they need a divorce. I really liked the 80s party. It was amazing to see everybody just participate. Obviously, Jasmine felt lonely because Eris wasn't there. So yeah, that was sad. But I don't know. Um uh, I think everybody made an effort it was nice to see them relax and just enjoy themselves and enjoy the moment but then gina 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 i don't know why she's there she had to be a debbie downer because clint was sort of highlighting that they were the couple of the night and whatever and then she went oh what about chris and nicole and it's like why why is it every time clint tries to do something nice you have to dampen the mood is it because you don't want him to come out as the good guy when you say no on decision day and you want everybody to feel sorry for you what is it what is it? I don't get it. I, I, I think that relationship is a, it's gone past its sell by date. That's just my opinion. It's gone past its sell by date. They need to divorce. I will keep saying this in my reviews and I know they're on decision day. They are going to say no. There's no two ways about it. Unless she thinks Gina, unless Gina thinks it will benefit her in some way, it's a no already from them. But anyway, I digress. Thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Bye everyone.